Fifteenth in line to the Tongan throne, the Honourable Princess Virginia Tuita carries centuries of royal tradition into her wedding rehearsal. My parents were arranged because in Tonga you sort of arrange marriages for the good of the families, but because I'm the youngest girl, I always saw myself as remaining single and taking care of them for the rest of my life. So when my parents first started searching for a suitable husband for me, um, I just sort of laughed it off. Not wanting their daughter to end up alone, Virginia's parents set about creating a list of the most eligible bachelors in Tonga. My parents wanted me to have that companionship. So Lopete was one of the bachelors that my parents had in mind. I would have never married anyone that my parents didn't approve of. We're just very, very happy for Virginia and Lopetti and we try to be as supportive as, as, as most parents would be when their, their daughter gets married. For the Auckland Tongan community, this royal wedding will be one of the most important events of the year. This is the first time for us to hold this one from the royal family. It's very special. They are so many other people far, far more better than me to do this. But they asked me to do this, and then I do. Humbly obey them. The pressure of marrying into royalty is not lost on groom to be Lord Petty. Very excited. I'm looking forward to Saturday when I just can't get, you know, can't wait to get everything out of the way. The wedding will bring to an end a two year engagement. And only once married will Virginia and Lil Petty be permitted to be alone together for the first time. I was nervous at the rehearsal. It sort of dawned on everyone, um, especially me, that this is the real deal. I was like, I'm getting married. I'm leaving my parents forever. Oh my gosh. With the wedding now a week away, Virginia is stepping closer to starting a very different kind of life. This marriage is huge for me for 30 years of my life. I had people to do things for me and I don't know anything different. And Lopetti is very independent and he does things for himself so I want to learn how to do that too. In just four days, 30-year-old Princess Virginia will tie the knot in a traditional Tongan arranged marriage. Oh, how beautiful are these orchids? Really, really beautiful. Helping Virginia to reach the altar is Adrian, her best friend and maid of honour. I was supposed to marry before you. Yeah, you were <laughs> definitely supposed to get married before me, because I never even saw myself getting married. Just work and take care of my parents. Being the youngest girl, um, I always felt that was my duty, to just, the others can go off and then I, I was just going to stay home. So you're just going to take care of your nieces and nephews? Yep. Be the favourite <laughs> Be the favourite auntie? <laughs> have you felt pressured? Or have you, um, like, Probably pressured to stick to tradition. If I was under the pressure that you're under, I would have eloped. <laughs> I would have been right there behind no, you. No, no. <laughs> well, that's always an option. Just but has that, Obviously, that hasn't run your mind, but no, was it no. anything that you would want to change? Um, probably not, because yeah, I've seen that um, keeping two traditions has kept my family happy and it's right. made me happy, so. Not being part of the royal family or accustomed to traditional protocol, Adrian was an unusual choice for maid of honour. There is a lot more pressure on Adrian than me. When I first asked her to be my maid of honour, she was scared. She thought some of her family members and other people thought I'd choose someone of status. Myself as a commoner, it's just a big task, an honour and privilege to be her maid of honour. Ever since she asked me last year, I've been really nervous and time has come really fast. So, yeah, really nervous. I think I'm more nervous than the bride. <laughs> in a royal wedding you have to follow prong and protocol otherwise you'll get slapped on the slapped on the hand <laughs> It's two days to the royal wedding and Adrian's ability to handle her duty as maid of honour is already being tested. 
Adrian got the daunting news that the venue where she was supposed to hold the bridal lunch double booked. She was under so much stress and that's when her cousin stepped in and offered her house. So we rang around in some of the top restaurants and they were all fully booked. So this was the last option, last resort, last option. We organised flowers, organised caterers, organised hireage people. Hosting the Tongan royal family at your home is a real privilege, but comes with huge responsibility. People grow up being told how to act in front of someone of status. And if you do something wrong, you're told off on the spot. And it's quite embarrassing to get told off in public. I'm freaking out. I'm secretly just kind of exploding inside. <laughs> Because, you know, I'm quite the perfectionist. I like to make sure everything is perfect. It's a huge deal. I'm quite honoured, although I, I, could, I could live without it, but I'm quite honoured that it's, it has happened. The role of maid of honour always comes with pressure, but when the bride's a princess, there's an expectation for perfection. Adrian's been under a lot of stress. I've had to hold it together. <laughs> especially with the changes last night. She was there in a bit of a heap. So I just walked her, I walked her through it slowly and told her that we will be fine and that we can do it. And um, she's walking around now. She's full of emotions. It is a lot. It is a lot. I don't know how, how, she, how she's doing it. It's, it's a lot. You know, taking and then having the royal family to do this for them and their family. So she's just hoping that it's good enough. The guests of honour arrive, but will Adrian's last minute change of plans be good enough for the royal family? Last night was a really rough night, just thinking of the outcome of it. I actually had less than 24 hours to turn a living room and dining room into a luncheon fit for a princess. I hope I've delivered what she's expected of a maid of honor. Oh, she's just like gone over and above everything. It's gorgeous here. It's so stunning. It's so pretty and everyone is beautiful. It feels like a mini wedding. <laughs> It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Maid of Honor. <laughs> Relax. Right. Have some champagne. Right. De stress. The fairy tale wedding is back on track. The focus is now on the bride, and Virginia has a lot to live up to. She does demonstrate a true Tongan being ladylike. Not that everyone else is different, but uh, um, that's what the expectation from the country is all about, you know, from Tonga and Ham. A modern royal bride, she is well educated. She doesn't come across as stuck up, no. hoity toity. She very is humble. very humble. She greets everybody as if she is your friend, your best friend. But what do the ladies think of the lucky man? Through his chivalry and the way he went through protocol, I think that's how he captured um, her heart. He had a million dollar smile, that was that sealed the deal. I was very pleased and very happy. And now that everyone's having fun, I'm very pleased and it's been a success. Celebrations are in full swing. Lopiti's mother, Mili Sumiki Ale Motua, dances in honor of her daughter to be. In the Tongan custom, when we have entertainment, which is usually um, the Taolonga, um, and there's other sort of Tongan dances, you show your appreciation for the entertainment by putting money on them. turned out really great. Everyone had a wonderful time. It was nice to have that personal talks with each other without having formalities around us. It's the morning of Princess Virginia's wedding. With 10 bridesmaids to dress and make up, the pressure is on to be ready in time for the royal wedding in 
three hours. I don't know who's more nervous, the bride or myself. <laughs> but I'm ready and I can't wait to see her. Anything can happen today. <laughs> it's the day, no matter how much you plan for certain things, everything you know, doesn't happen exactly the way you plan. Hurry up, please. We have to go get the bride. Auntie <laughs> <laughs> Carla just arrived. <laughs> This will be the biggest Tongan wedding ever held in New Zealand, and everyone needs to look perfect. But Virginia's taken a gamble, allowing her bridesmaids to design their own dresses. Oh, they look beautiful. They all look like pretty, pretty dolls. <laughs> Hey, we're not at a funeral, we're at a wedding. <laughs> I don't think I've slept this whole week. I've tried, but I can't really sleep. I'm just gonna laugh the whole day, that's all I want. No worries. So this is uh, 24 karat gold, so it's Oh my gold. gosh. Gold? Yes, gold. On my face. Big <laughs> for a queen. <laughs> As the princess starts to relax, her prince isn't finding it so easy. I know he was stressed because we were texting this morning, so I called him. He was stressing out a bit. I just told him to relax and enjoy the day. There's like no time for stress anymore. Just leave that for yesterday and the weeks before that. <laughs> so hopefully he's calmed down. church, family and community are frantically preparing for the arrival of the bride. Both our maternal families had to wear the big mats because that's to signify who we can sort of get to do our runarounds. If we need anything, they'll have to go get it. So it's part of the ceremonial uh, traditions. I'm not worried. We've planned this wedding for a long time. I'm pretty sure Lopet is ready to receive Honorable Moihofo as Mrs. Zale Mutua. Most of all, I'm happy that families are here to witness their nephew, their grandson, my son, marrying into the royal family. The groom is in place. The guests are ready. All that's missing is the bride. Where is she? Today is the day Virginia and Naval Officer Lopetti become husband and wife in a traditional Tongan arranged marriage. While the groom is all ready to go, it appears the most important person is running fashionably late. Where is she? We ran behind schedule, like by a lot. <laughs> She's always late to things. Out of the four girls and my son, she's always late. It's a bad, bad habit, which I hope you'll get over soon. <laughs> Even being born, um, I was late. Yes, that's right. I've been late since I was born. <laughs> Someone just sent a picture of them standing at the... They're all waiting now. Oh. <laughs> Send him a message saying, here I am having my hair done. <laughs> <laughs> And I sort of thought, well, brides are supposed to be late, but I know not that late. And I kind of felt bad, but then, you know, I couldn't help it. <laughs> this is just a, a family tradition. As I have four girls, I have put on, placed the veil for them each time. This will be the last time, because she's the last daughter. <laughs> 
my mom she can do anything she's so understanding she makes sure that all of us kids know our place and do our duties and that we're comfortable with who we are and what choices we make to me she's perfect my mom is just okay, i'm getting emotional Fantabulous. Finally, the bride is ready, but the groom may need to wait a little longer. We just got lost getting there <laughs> for about 45 minutes. Just you know, enjoying the tiki tour. But my my maid of honor, Adrian, she was getting stressed out. With her father by her side, Virginia takes her final steps towards marriage. It hit me when my dad was walking me down the aisle. It wasn't until sort of the middle where I sort of looked down and I was looking at my dad's feet. And so that's when it dawned upon me and I didn't want to get emotional, so I just looked down. And then I sort of quickly looked up and saw Lopetti standing there. And then I sort of giggled to myself. I knew what he was thinking. He was probably like, finally. <laughs> A proud Lord Tuita gives his blessing by giving his daughter's hand to Lopetti. My wedding day was definitely just amazing. It was more than I expected. And just seeing everyone so happy, it was really lovely. Daimeni, manato e ko e wife me me use pani tiki mo wa ya feilo aki ko hoa. Pasu asu mai kiai. You hardly see Tongan weddings where the bride and groom will actually, you know, kiss each other on the lips in front of everyone like that. Today is the start of a new and biggest chapter of my life and Lopetti's life. At the end of the night I didn't want it to end, I wanted it to keep going. And I was sort of just standing back and asking, oh it's finished, everything's finished, all this stress leading up to the day and then it just goes by like that. When we get back to Tonga and we move into his house, it's just weird, like, having to share everything. And I'm gonna have to live with my husband and we have to get to know each other and all that. There is a bit of pressure to, to have kids. Because, you know, now that we're married, we have, you know, certain family members saying like, Okay, Lopetti, next year, we need the first child next year. I'm like, okay, no pressure. <laughs>